Imagine this. It's 30 days from now. Your voice is out in the world. Your podcast is live and you are building an audience that cannot wait to tune in every week. Sound impossible? Well, it's not because with my signature podcasting program, the podcast lab, you can make it happen faster than you think. And lucky for you, the doors are now open. You can join at teachmetopodcast.com. Now, my five-step roadmap will walk you through the step-by-step process from planning to production, publishing to promotion, all the way to profit. And you can do it all in just 30 days. I just re-recorded this program from scratch, so it is 100% current and ready to guide you through everything we do for this show and beyond. No tech overwhelm, no marketing guesswork, and no struggling to plan episodes that get your listeners hooked. I've broken it all down into simple, actionable steps that make podcasting not just possible, but fun. If you're ready to stop thinking and finally do it, now is your chance. Head to teachmetopodcast.com. In just 30 days, you could be launching your show, gaining traction, and positioning yourself to make an impact and an income. Let's make that podcast dream a reality. Join now at teachmetopodcast.com. If you're a creative soul looking for a way to take your photography or event business to the next level without adding more hours to your schedule, you're going to love this inspiring story. Catalina was a wedding photographer working her tail off to make $1,000 for weeks of work. But when she added a photo booth to her business, everything changed. She started charging the same amount for just three hours of work. Since then, she scaled her business to seven figures. Now, if you're thinking that sounds like the dream, you need to check out this free masterclass from Photo Booth Supply Co. It's called Capture Success, How to Turn Your Creative Passion into a Six-Figure Photo Booth Business. Catalina is going to show you how you can take what you're already passionate about and turn it into a massive profit. You'll learn how you can earn $1,000 or more per event with a photo booth rental business. If you're someone who loves creating memories, or maybe you've been looking for a fun side hustle, you've got to check this out. Head to photoboothsupplyco.com slash gold digger to get your free access and my special promo code. This is your chance to work smarter, create more freedom and build something truly amazing. That's photoboothsupplyco.com slash gold digger. My podcast could have failed, flopped, or fizzled out. I could have tried for 10 episodes and found out it wasn't for me. But even then, it wouldn't have been a failure. I wouldn't have counted it as a loss. Failure, like success, exists only in the ways we define it. I'm Jenna Kutcher, your host of the Gold Digger Podcast. I escaped the corporate world at the age of 23 with nothing more than a $300 camera from Craigslist and a dream. Now I'm running a seven-figure online business that feels even better than it looks, all from my house in small town Minnesota with my family. Here, we value time as our currency. We mix the woo and the work, and we are in the pursuit of building businesses that give us the freedom to live lives that we love. I've always loved turning big goals into reality, and I'm here to help you do the same. This isn't just a peek behind the curtain. Come along with me and my guests as we tear the whole curtain down. Every week we tackle practical, no-fluff marketing strategies and host honest discussions on what works and what doesn't. Join me and my expert guests for actionable insights to help you grow your dream business with confidence. Pull up a seat and get ready to be challenged, inspired, and empowered. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. We've all heard that saying, start before you're ready. But how often do we really take that advice to heart? Today's episode is a little different, and it's honestly really special to me because I'm taking you inside of chapter 15 of my book, How Are You Really? In this chapter, I dive deep into the fear of starting imperfectly, finding the courage to take that first step towards your dreams, and why taking messy, brave action despite your doubts is the secret to growth. Whether you're launching a new business, starting a podcast, or pursuing a passion that's been on your heart, this chapter is all about embracing the imperfection that comes with the journey. And trust me, I know a thing or two about that. 
Starting this podcast was anything but perfect. But here we are over 800 episodes later, proof that action creates clarity. If you've been looking for permission to start imperfectly and courageously, this episode is for you. And if you want to grab a copy of How Are You Really, head on over to howareyoureallybook.com to get it. Now let's dive on into this chapter and learn how to start embracing the beauty of imperfection together. With smaller budgets, shorter timelines, and sky-high expectations, growth is feeling really painful right now. But HubSpot is here to help. They just announced more than 150 major product updates that'll make impossible business growth feel impossibly easy. Like Breeze, HubSpot's suite of new AI tools that'll help you say goodbye to busy work and hello to better work. There's Breeze Copilot, a sidekick to assist with all your tasks and boost productivity. Breeze Agents to automate manual time-consuming work and add expertise. And Breeze Intelligence to give you the richest, most comprehensive picture of your prospects. So you know which are most likely to become loyal customers. They've also reimagined their marketing and content hubs with new ways to create breakthrough content, updated features to generate better leads, and lots more to uplevel your marketing and your revenue forecast. Get ready for growth without the growing pains. Visit hubspot.com slash spotlight to see them all and demo for yourself. That's hubspot.com slash spotlight. Chapter 15 just one step, where to start and how. Reinvent yourself over and over and over and over and over until you find home. There is no timeline for the soul. Malebo Safodi. But how do you keep showing up imperfectly? A girlfriend recently asked me. I laughed. My first response was, is there another option? Because in my experience, life isn't going to give you one. Waiting for perfection will have us waiting forever and wasting a whole lot of time. Waiting for perfection might mean staying in a relationship, a job, house, or a city you know you outgrew long ago. Waiting for perfection might mean missing out on a beautiful, bold future to stay comfortable in a narrow view of now. There's an old Voltaire quote that I force myself to cling to when my perfectionist side wants to take the reins. The best is the enemy of the good. Straightforward, hard to ignore, cuts me to my core. These eight words speak volumes to me in the moments I want to freeze up before I can fail. Because in all of this stalling to make sure there's no risk, I don't even get a chance to try. My friend Emma knows a thing or two about this quote. Emma is what you'd call an idea girl, bubbling over with business plans and smart inventions and million-dollar concepts she's constantly mapping out in her head. From visions of facilitating local events to empowering and connecting women across the world, Emma's ideas are beautiful and bold and powerful. But they are just that, ideas. Merely thoughts that live in her head without the world knowing or being able to experience the dreams she holds. I first met Emma at a business retreat a few years ago, and we bonded in the hotel lobby over a shared love for hot lemon water. A few days into the retreat, she asked if she could pick my brain about a few ideas she felt stuck in. So on the last day of the event, we met for an early sunrise walk before catching flights back home to our families. As we sipped our morning lemon water tonics from paper cups, she described every obstacle that stood in the way of her, dozens of ideas. We talked and I listened, and in the first mile alone, it was clear to me something bigger was at play here. She was afraid. She wanted a fail-safe. She wanted a 100% guarantee that every action she took moving forward would work. She wanted to know that if she really went for it, she'd stick the landing. Most of the obstacles she described that could potentially hold her back were what-ifs living in her brain, bottlenecking her thoughts like rush hour traffic, paralyzing her from taking action. This wasn't just an Emma problem. This was a human problem. I've seen it time and time again. She was essentially overcomplicating her plans as a means to keep waiting a little longer to act on them. 
a goal of perfection leading her to procrastination that delayed any form of her progress. The vision stayed so big that they might as well have been a mission to Mars. Listening to her, I felt my hands start to get sweaty, and it wasn't from the sunrise hike. Just thinking about how many ideas take residence in incredible human minds like Emma's made me feel a fraction of her anxiety. Her fear of failure was holding her back. And fear? Well, the sources may differ for each of us, but the feeling in our bodies is usually the same. I'm getting anxious listening to all of the ideas you aren't taking action on, I told her. You're letting potential problems and your desire for perfection be your excuse to procrastinate on your dreams. What if you picked one thing that was easiest for you and just started? It doesn't have to be your life's greatest calling or an idea that will go on to change the world, but right now you need to prove to yourself that you're capable of taking imperfect action, of simply getting started and making progress. She nodded, wide-eyed, We both knew where it was she wanted to end up, but we also both knew she'd never get there unless she moved forward with just one step. So many of us often complicate this first step. We zoom out until it looks like an insurmountable task, at least for now, at least until we get our life together, until we have the money we need, until we can clear our schedules, until, until, until. We work on the idea itself rather than doing the work that turns the idea into the thing. We let ourselves believe that the idea is so big, we need to become an entirely different person before we can even approach it. But when we do this, we forget to look down there at our own two feet. Our shoes, the ones we laced up this morning, ready to take just one step. A small one, perhaps, but a step that gets us just a tiny bit closer. And maybe on the fifth step, we trip. Maybe on the twelfth step, we fall pretty hard. Maybe on the thirty-eighth step, we stumble. But we keep getting up, because falling doesn't adhere us to the ground. We can turn our ideas from a giant mission into a day-by-day journey simply by doing the thing. That thing could be anything whether launching a book club in your neighborhood or launching your own book into the world, whether adopting a child or adopting a new life philosophy, whether changing up your diet or changing up your hair, every new path begins with one single step, one action to inch you closer, to scoot you further, to move you onward in the direction of your dream. But here's the catch. No one can take action for you. You have to be the one to take it, even if it's with trembling knees. Unfortunately, life doesn't always present us with a smoothly paved route or perfect rhythm every time we're running down a dream. We don't always know what the proposal is supposed to say, how to fix our marriage, or what to do about the scary diagnosis. We get flustered. We get lost. We start making excuses. And we miss out on the grand adventure, having never made any progress to pursue a better path. The position you're in this very moment is one you can leverage to get you to the next spot. The tools you have within your reach are the ones you're meant to use to create your rough draft, your round one, your prototype's prototype. Over the years, I've learned that most of the time, we don't get to have the grand experiences or even the shiny things if we aren't willing to utilize what we're working with right now. Your million-dollar life may come, but until then, go ahead and start with your hundred-dollar life. If you're serious about making connections that actually lead to results, LinkedIn is where it's at, especially if you're in the B2B world. With LinkedIn ads, you can get your business in front of the right people, like 180 million senior level executives and 10 million C-level execs. It's like the ultimate business network, but way more targeted and with fewer distractions. On other platforms, it can feel like you're shouting into the wind, but with LinkedIn ads, you're building real relationships with the right people. And that's where the magic happens. 
79% of B2B marketers agree that LinkedIn is their number one for paid media. And it's easy to see why. LinkedIn gives you tools to drive real results. And with two to five times higher return on ad spend, it just makes sense. So if you want to build meaningful relationships, start making smarter moves with your marketing and grow your business, it is time to get LinkedIn ads working for you. Make B2B marketing everything it can be and get a hundred dollar credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash goal to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash G O A L terms and conditions apply. If you're a creative soul looking for a way to take your photography or event business to the next level without adding more hours to your schedule, you're going to love this inspiring story. Catalina was a wedding photographer working her tail off to make a thousand dollars for weeks of work. But when she added a photo booth to her business, everything changed. She started charging the same amount for just three hours of work. Since then, she scaled her business to seven figures. Now, if you're thinking that sounds like the dream, you need to check out this free masterclass from Photo Booth Supply Co. It's called Capture Success, How to Turn Your Creative Passion into a Six-Figure Photo Booth Business. Catalina is going to show you how you can take what you're already passionate about and turn it into a massive profit. You'll learn how you can earn $1,000 or more per event with a photo booth rental business. If you're someone who loves creating memories, or maybe you've been looking for a fun side hustle, you've got to check this out. Head to photoboothsupplyco.com slash gold digger to get your free access and my special promo code. This is your chance to work smarter, create more freedom and build something truly amazing. That's photoboothsupplyco.com slash gold digger. Trust me, I'm no stranger to scrappy first steps. When I launched my very first podcast episode, I was sitting in the front seat of my 2008 hybrid in the car parked in my garage with a microphone and two spare bedroom pillows balanced over my steering wheel. I hit record. That podcast now has hundreds of episodes, tens of thousands of monthly listeners, and millions upon millions of downloads. To this day, I can remember what that first hour felt like. I can smell the leather of my seats as I sat freezing into a human popsicle during that Wisconsin winter. Determined to not open the door until I had finally started. I had no high-tech microphone, no previous experience, and no clue what production value was. I simply hit record, and that was the day the Gold Digger podcast was born. The day that I decided it was time to gather up all the guts I could to simply hit the record button on my first episode was the day my idea finally came to life, even in the midst of my hesitation. Even though I had no idea what I was doing, even though it was nowhere near perfect. Sure, starting a podcast may have been a calculated guess, but it was one that felt right. One I didn't hitch my identity to in terms of numbers and money. One idea that had me curious enough to try something new with zero guarantee it'd work out. On that day, I decided success for me was just hitting record and saying a few words. Truth was, I was so insecure about my own voice, literally and figuratively. Would I come across as someone who had something to say that other people would actually want to hear? Would I say, um, eight million times? Would I lose my train of thought or forget how to form a coherent sentence? It didn't matter. Because sharing my thoughts, my ideas, and the things I've learned with the world, that was enough for me. That was the imperfect action I encouraged myself to take. My podcast could have failed, flopped, or fizzled out. I could have tried for 10 episodes and found out it wasn't for me. But even then, it wouldn't have been a failure. I wouldn't have counted it as a loss. Failure, like success, exists only in the ways we define it. Who gets to decide what counts as a success or a failure? We do. It's safe to say my podcast is nowhere near perfect. It is riddled with mistakes, even to this day. Time and time again, life has gently reminded me that this notion of perfect is just that, a notion, an illusion. It's not even real. As simple as that is for me to type, it's not at all easy for any of us to learn. It's easy to say, humans make mistakes. 
But what happens when you put your name in that sentiment and make it personal? Jenna makes mistakes. Yep, apply it directly to you. It stings a little bit more, doesn't it? But it's true. You make mistakes. I make mistakes. I'll bet even Oprah makes mistakes. Maybe, although I can't really bear to think of that. Mistakes aren't just something to fear or something to hold us back. They arrive with knowledge that propels us forward. If you choose to not embrace your ever-evolving, ever-learning, ever-mistake-making self, you're withholding those potential gains from yourself. But you're also withholding that knowledge from everyone else. You're letting those around you carry on without your contribution. You're existing in your own shadow, safe and sheltered from all mistakes, but never stepping out to feel the sun or experience the fun of taking risks. When we allow ourselves to experience the fun of taking risks, everything becomes an experiment. We become the mad scientists of our own lives. We lose the desire to label everything as a success or a failure. Instead, everything we do yields a result that gives us information. And information empowers us to make decisions on the next action we'll take. I'll be honest. I've always been a done-is-better-than-perfect kind of gal. Imperfect action has always been my way of movement, even when I don't know what results the action will yield, even when it sounds easier to stay still and avoid the risk. But avoiding risk and staying safe aren't the same thing, are they? What if by staying safe, you're risking never evolving, never growing, never trying, never creating your own happily ever after? Don't get me wrong. There are certain situations in which I would love to know the ending before I read chapter one, where I'd love to know that everything is going to be okay, that I'm going to be okay, but ideas don't always become realities that way. It's perfectly reasonable to want a master plan for every starting line of life. And when you're embarking on something new, you're likely going to crave an immaculately detailed blueprint or at the very least a syllabus. But when you're learning or attempting something new, you're accepting the mystery. Along with the unknown, you get the full right to say, hey, I've never been here before. I have no idea what I'm doing. You get to poise yourself as a beginner, open and willing and teachable, fully ready to launch off the starting block to find out if the water below is tepid or icy or absolutely perfectly, finally refreshing. So what do you do when there's no countdown or a starting pistol going off telling you it's time to begin? You refine the vision. You ask for help. You bring people into your conversations. Read the feedback. Hit record and see what happens next. You might feel it's not going to matter. You might want to close up shop after day one because of the belly butterflies. You might need to nervous pee because of the sheer feeling of doom that you're going to let other people down. Do your thing anyway. Find your footing, choose your pace, and honor that part of you, however small or hoarse-voiced it is, that is asking you to try something just a little bit scary. These days, we tend to want to fast forward the getting better part. We don't want others to see us trying. We only want to show the success. It's like our digital lives have become a peer-reviewed journal, and we'd rather stick to what we know than risk failing, or worse, failing publicly. We worry about people seeing us try something new. We worry about the judgment. We worry about not getting it right or not having an Instagrammable outcome from day one. But there's a reason the old grid is made up of many, many squares. If there's room for square 4,351, there's room for a square one. With every major pivot in my life, I'm brought right back to square one. I love being reminded of what it felt like at some of my own starting lines because I know I have many more awaiting me. The fear, the feeling that I'm not worthy of the race, the wonder of what results my experiment will yield, and in spite of it all, getting into the starting position and running like crazy anyway. When I recorded that first episode in my car parked in my dark garage, I wasn't thinking about episode 500. I had no idea what topic I'd be covering years from then. 
I had to narrow my focus, lower the stakes, and keep my sights on the first episode. I had to take the first step, the one I could control in that very moment, hitting record, talking about the thing I'd planned, exiting the garage, eating soup for dinner, and maybe laughing at the whole ordeal with Drew over said soup. I just had to let my courage be louder than my doubt for one hour. One single hour, then I could hit stop, get out of the car, and go back to wondering what the heck I was doing or if it'd work out. That's how progress begins, with one brave hour. Moving forward is knowing that you can commit to just one step at a time and then deciding to take another and another. Like when you're in a thigh-quaking, back-tweaking workout and you know you're not even halfway done, but you're 99% ready to give up and call it a day, then the trainer yells at you, you can do anything for 15 seconds, and you take a deep breath and actually believe them. Imperfect action feels like this, and if you're like me, it comes with the same amount of sweat. There are countless stories that teach this one simple truth. So many of life's greatest journeys involve winging it, giving it the old college try, just doing the dang thing, walking toward a bend in the road without knowing what's ahead, but with 100% assurance that it's better than being stuck where you're at. These tiny actions and small steps are happening everywhere, all around us this very minute. World-changing, best-selling novels are being scribbled on the corners of napkins or in the margins of another book. Billion-dollar companies are sprouting up from folding tables in garages. Future comedians are making people laugh around their own dinner table. Fashion designers are learning their craft with hand-me-downs and scissors. Get scrappy. Get resourceful. Get creative. Get going. What will your first step look like? Will you type how to get a grant in your search bar? Will you ask your midwife what books she'd recommend on learning homeopathic healing? Will you join your local Toastmasters to brush up on your public speaking skills? Will you borrow your neighbor's power drill and build a bookshelf? I've met many humans over the years who have told me about all their ideas that are in the works as they await the perfect time for them to be launched into reality. Truth be told, most of those ideas never enter the world. They simply stay ideas. Actually, strike that. I wish that were the case, but the reality can be far more painful. More often than not, those unexplored ideas become a source of shame, stress, and pressure as they become unlived dreams. Resentment doesn't need much of an invite to start to seep its way into our lives. It's far more common than not for women to feel like the good days are behind them or that they're only busy with living unfulfilled lives. If you're there right now, don't shut out these thoughts, even though they're painful. Plunge your arm deep into the dirt and wrap your fingers around the roots and start pulling them up. Look at what seeds they sprouted from. Okay, let's be real. Why are we still overpaying for wireless? I know I've been guilty of it, but Mint Mobile is here to change the game. For just $15 a month on a three-month premium plan, you can get unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data on the nation's largest 5G network. That's right, 15 bucks. You can even bring your own phone, keep your number, and all of your contacts. The switch is super easy and there's no need to start from scratch. You get to keep everything the same and just pay less, like way less. If you've been searching for a smarter, cheaper way to manage your phone bill, this is the sign you've been waiting for. No hidden fees, no surprises, just a great deal on wireless. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash gold digger. That's mintmobile.com slash gold digger. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gold digger. $45 upfront payment required equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three months month plan only speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan additional taxes fees and restrictions this feels like a good time to ask how are you really are you angry your life didn't turn out the way you wanted the way it was supposed to are you frustrated or scared the dreams that have been sitting in your heart all this time are still just dreams and perhaps getting heavier by the year 
And here's one of the questions we must approach with however many extra dashes of bravery necessary. Who do you think is responsible? Who or what have you found yourself blaming for a loss of fulfillment? What is keeping you from action? Maybe you shoved the early seeds of a dream deep down into your pocket because planting them didn't make sense at the moment. Maybe saving your dream for later was a pragmatic thing to do, the right choice at the time. Maybe waiting was wise all those years ago. But I want to tell you to plant those seeds now. Don't wait until the perfect season, because if you wait any longer, the dream won't grow. Resentment will. Bitterness will. Like root rot on that aloe plant you've had in your bathroom for too long, your past will try to tangle you up and keep you from your present, sabotaging your chance at trying to grow the life you're yearning to live now. Look down. You're not in the soil. You're above it. You're the gardener of your own life, and you get to choose what to plant. You get to enjoy what grows. Your life is still happening and is therefore not labeled as unfulfilled. There are many, many blank pages left for you to fill in. That's the epicenter of why we're having this conversation in the first place. I'm not scared that you're not doing enough. I'm not telling you to make sure you fill up every breath and opportunity with more doing. That's the antithesis to my very being. In fact, I'm waving a big warning flag in the air to signal you to notice what you are doing or not doing and make sure it's what you actually mean to do. After years of seeing others live their lives on autopilot engineered by someone else and almost doing that very same thing myself, I want to see more of us uninstall that programming. I want us to feel the freedom to explore new things, to make mistakes, and to let those mistakes roll off our backs as they teach us how to move forward. Perhaps that first intentional step will be one you find yourself looking back on and saying, I didn't know it then, but that one decision changed my entire trajectory. It led me here. I know mine did. Not too long ago, I scrolled way back and hit play on my very first podcast episode. I cringed a little, okay, a lot, remembering how I muttered into my earbud microphone in a voice that no longer sounds like my own. I spoke with my phone voice. While my voice and delivery have evolved and improved over the years, I am so proud of my humble garage beginnings, and I still cling to them now. I'm so thankful I took action. I'm so proud I went for it. I'm so grateful it all led me right here. Moments of inspiration would have never turned into reality if I tried to plot the perfect path. If I had spent months and months researching the perfect microphone, maybe I would never have hit record in the front seat of my car. If I had decided that those $300 were too much to spend on the camera I used to start my photography business and kept searching for a cheaper one, I could still be in my windowless office. And if I had never opened up a document and started typing these words, this audiobook wouldn't be in your ears today. For this chapter's writing prompt, how are you, really? Which of your ideas are stuck in your head, going nowhere? What's really holding you back? Where is fear of failure rearing its head? And what's the first imperfect step you can take to make your big, unwieldy idea into a you-sized reality? Don't lock your goals in your heart in a place where they live only as a goal where they only serve as a weight holding you down rather than a launch pad ready to lift you up. Bring your ideas forth. Hold them up to the light. Ask them what action is required of you and listen. Remember my friend Emma? The moment we faced her own how are you really question together was the moment she realized that she had two choices. She could keep putting off her ideas for someday or she could start somewhere small today. She chose the second option. And once she'd returned home from our retreat, attended a local networking event for women in business, as she nervously walked through the door, 
She was ushered to a name tag station and instructed to write not only her first name, but her dream career underneath. She laughed as she tried to write, organizer of women's retreats worldwide in the tiniest letter she could manage. Soon, the event leader hushed the crowd and motioned for everyone to take their seats and welcome the evening speaker. Emma made her way to one of the last empty chairs, squeezing into a row in the back. Offering a quick hello to the women next to her, she glanced over at their name tags. To Emma's right, scrawled in Sharpie, she saw travel agent. And to her left, international hotelier. A reminder for you, you needn't know the future in order to give a good idea a whirl in the present. Just start with something good, something honest. Let the path reveal itself from there. And don't forget to bring a Sharpie. I hope this chapter resonated with you as much as it did for me while writing it. Now, the truth is that none of us start with all the answers and that's okay. The most important thing is that we start, even if it's imperfect, even if we have doubts, action leads to clarity and every step you take gets you closer to your dreams. And speaking of starting imperfectly, if launching a podcast has been on your heart, but you're not sure where to begin, I've got you covered. You can join my free training at freepodcastclass.com, where I will walk you through podcasting 101, how to start, record, and profit from your show. I'm going to walk you through how starting a podcast is easier than you think and give you the steps to take so that you can set it up right from the start. I'm also sharing the things I wish I would have done differently. I am living proof that you do not need perfection in order to get going. You just need to take that first step. And I am here to guide that first step of yours. Again, that's freepodcastclass.com to save your free seat. So whether you're ready to launch your own show, chase a big dream or take that leap, I hope today's episode gave you the nudge you needed. And of course, if you haven't yet, grab a copy of How Are You Really? There are so many amazing stories in there that will inspire your next move and ask you to answer the bigger questions in your own life. Until next time, gold diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. And thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the podcast. Thanks for pulling up a seat for another episode of the Gold Digger Podcast. I hope today's episode fueled you with inspiration, gave you information that you can turn into action, and realigned you with your true north in life and business. If you've enjoyed today's episode, head on over to golddiggerpodcast.com for today's show notes, discount codes for our sponsors, freebies to fuel your results, and so much more. And if you haven't yet, make sure you're subscribed so that you never miss a future show. We'll see you next time, Gold Diggers. Thank you.